All right, we are going to be getting started in just one moment. Okay, I think we're good. Right. Hello everyone, my name is Yusuf Adib and I am a business management major at the University of Houston downtown. In this presentation, I will be conducting an analysis of the case study of the Southwood School. So before I do start, I just want to mention that I personally felt that this analysis of the Southwood School was an example of how a training program would have failed and the trainers could have done a better job at conducting. So we're going to dive deeper into why I got that impression. To begin with, every training program would always have barriers and a, a successful training manager should be able to anticipate them and avoid them. In this case, the main barrier was the negative attitude of the participants as they had previous bad, previous bad experience with the system. Now, the way that the instructor should have avoided this problem was to be able to confront these participants, uh, contact them, address the situation, explain how the system is different and be open about them and be able to resolve any problems before starting the training session. That would have been the first step in order to get all of that resolved. There were other ways the barriers could have been resolved and we're going to dive deeper into them. First and foremost, the most important step that the training manager should have done was conduct research. You should have gathered the necessary information from the participants. With this information, it's basically gathering the perception. They would also gather information about the participants, how they prefer to study, and what is their preferred learning methods. Using that information, they'd be able to tailor a better, a better training material towards them. After following that step, motivate. So now that they know that the participants prefer a more auditory, visual, or even more interactive module, they can tailor that and motivate the participants. Typically within any training program, you are going to have certain participants that still have negative attitudes and are expressive. You should always address them, talk to them, be open about them, be empathetic, hear them out so that you can, you can provide an answer on the spot rather than just let it linger and then you have lost your participants' attention. One more thing that has to be talked about regarding this case study was the fact that the top managers decided to go with a route of internal consulting rather than external. I do believe that is a preferred option. However, let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages in a way both. Using internal consulting, in other words, using the managers from within the school to train the employees had several advantages, including cost, flexibility, as well as the fact that the manager is already familiar with this material. So it's it can come more naturally towards them and they can explain the material better. However, had they gone with an external consulting company it would have helped them in other ways. An external consulting company would have had more experience dealing with these situations, it would have conducted the necessary research and also the negative perception that the participants had towards internal management would have sort of been alleviated had they had external consulting available. Now, let's talk about evaluation and evaluation forms. These are essential for many reasons and the, as they help us determine if the skills that are used have been transferred, if the training's successful, and if all the necessary information was collected. The, inform the evaluation forms were not the best uh, within the school as they were very subjective and did not offer a more objective standard on whether the participants had learned something or not. However, it did help them learn the fact that the Participants were not as engaged, and at least that acts as an indicator. Next thing we should really talk about is Tesla's five-step process for training and development. That is something that the trainer, uh, training management had missed on and they should have focused on. They did conduct the need analysis, need analysis and evaluation. However, they lacked the structural design. They failed to properly design it. They lacked the validation and the implementation of the program. In order to conclude, um, we're just going to briefly summarize some of the parts that we said. So they should have gathered the data beforehand in order to deliver a better training program. They should have followed Dessler's five step, as I mentioned. They also could have provided e-learning since 
time was one of their biggest concerns and e-learning does provide a more flexible approach when it comes to time. Also, they could have experimented with some experiential learning methods or even more hands-on techniques since the system is a more practical skill that needs to be developed. So that is something they should have considered. However, it does offer a valuable teaching moment and there is much to learn from this case study. So thank you for listening and I wish you all the best.